Hey there, young scientists. Today, we're diving into the world of food chains and food webs. It's all about who eats who. We're going to learn about how energy flows from one living thing to the next. It's a wild ride, so buckle up. We've got five super fun experiments that will blow your mind. Get ready to explore the fascinating connections in ecosystems. Let's get started. For our first experiment, we're going to build a pyramid. Not just any pyramid, but a food chain pyramid. Every block on our pyramid is going to represent a different level in the food chain. At the bottom, we've got our producers, like plants. They're the ones making their own food from sunlight. Way to go, plants. Next up, we've got our herbivores, the plant eaters, on the next level. They get their energy by munching on those plants. And on the level above them, we've got the carnivores, the meat eaters. They're snacking on the herbivores. And at the very top, we have our top predators, the kings and queens of the food chain. Now here's the thing about our pyramid. It gets smaller as we go up. Why? Because energy is lost at each level. It's like a game of energy telephone. The message gets a little quieter with each whisper. So the higher up the food chain you go, the less energy there is available. That's why there are fewer top predators than herbivores. It takes a lot of energy to be at the top. Get ready to run wild in our next experiment, the predator-prey game. In this game, we're going to see how predator and prey populations affect each other. Imagine a lush jungle filled with gazelles and lions. When there are lots of gazelles to eat, the lion population grows strong, but as more lions hunt, the gazelle population starts to shrink. And guess what happens when there aren't enough gazelles to go around? That's right, the lion population shrinks too. It's a delicate balance. This game shows us how important it is for predator and prey populations to stay in check. Too many predators, and the prey population could be wiped out. Too few predators, and the prey population might explode, throwing the whole ecosystem out of whack. Hold on to your hats because things are about to get tangled in our next experiment. We're going to create a food web using yarn. It's like a giant game of connect the dots, but instead of dots, we have all sorts of amazing creatures. Let's start with our producers, the plants. They're the foundation of our web. Now, let's add some herbivores, like rabbits and deer. We'll use different colored yarn to connect them to the plants they eat. See how the web is growing? But wait, there's more. Let's add some carnivores, like foxes and owls. We'll connect them to the herbivores they prey on. And don't forget about the omnivores, like raccoons who eat both plants and animals. They get their own special color of yarn, connecting them to all sorts of different organisms. Look at that amazing web we've created. It's so interconnected. And that's the point. Food webs show us that everything in an ecosystem is connected. If one species disappears, it can have a ripple effect throughout the entire web. Get ready for a front row seat to the circle of life in our next experiment. We're talking decomposition, the process of breaking down dead stuff. It might not sound glamorous, but trust me, it's totally awesome. We're going to put some organic matter, like fruit peels and leaves, in a container and see what happens. Over time, we'll observe the amazing work of decomposers, those tiny organisms that break down dead stuff and return nutrients to the soil. We're talking bacteria, fungi, even some insects. They're like nature's recyclers. Without decomposers, our planet would be buried in dead stuff. They play a crucial role in keeping our ecosystems healthy and balanced. Get ready for some serious energy in our final experiment. We're going to trace the flow of energy through the food chain, all the way back to its source, the sun. It all starts with the sun's incredible energy. Plants use this energy to make their own food through photosynthesis. They're like energy factories. When herbivores munch on plants, they're taking in that stored energy. And when carnivores eat herbivores, that energy is passed on again. It's like a game of energy hot potato. But here's the thing. Some energy is lost as heat at each transfer. That's why the top predators need to eat a lot more to get the energy they need. This experiment shows us that the sun is the ultimate source of energy for almost all life on Earth. It's the fuel that keeps our ecosystems running. Wow, we've learned so much about food chains and food webs today. We've seen how energy flows through ecosystems, how predator and prey populations interact, and how interconnected everything is. Remember, even the smallest creatures play a big role in the balance of nature. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe too for more fascinating journeys into the unknown. 
Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring.